Hey guys, let go, let's go straight to the point. Today we're dealing with logarithms. And basically, uh, these logarithms that we're dealing with are going to help us understand more of how uh, we apply them in computer science and in programming. That's for the future. Uh, I was asked to do this story by some guys that, some class that I was having. So these guys were like, we should do logarithms. So basically, uh, we're going to have to deal with these logarithms. It's actually quite a very simple topic to understand. Very, very simple. We shall start with the definition. Uh, the exponent or power to which a base must be raised to yield a given number. You're going to see all this. We really don't need to go into details on that. We are going to see it. So... Uh, you have to read this. I'll I'll provide this. I'll provide this. You'll download it from our website. So basically, uh, these are the different parts of a logarithm. We have our b here for base. So this this is uh, basically our base. Then our n is standing for our argument. So log base b, n is the argument equals to x. So basically. This here is our log. This is equals to x, meaning uh, x is standing for exponent. So log log base b n is equals to x. So, but this is the same as b to the power x is equals to n, where b is the same base here, x is the same exponent, and n is the same argument. So basically. A log can also be expressed in power form. So this is a logarithm expressed in power form. So you should always keep this in mind. Every time you see a logarithm, you should always know that it can also be written in power form. Whereby log b for base, b for base here is, is put here. Then uh, the exponent is put, is made to be the power and then the n is made to be the admin. That's t that takes us back to our definition of a logarithm. The exponent or power to which a base must be raised to yield a given number. We are going to see all this. So this is the exponent. This is the exponent. So this is the exponent and it it's the same as the power. So let's start. Uh, what you should really know is any time you see log zero, that number doesn't that doesn't exist in logarithms, or log negative any number doesn't exist. For a logarithm to be successful, uh, the value n must be greater than zero. Every time you see a value less than zero, that logarithm does not exist. So basically, let's let's start. So log. Uh, log base b that's b for for our base then n for our argument and is equals to x for our exponent is the same as b to the power x base to the power exponent which is equals to the argument so let's start you're going to really understand this uh, please don't really be scared this is a very very simple topic so when i say log base 2 to the power 8 it's like a question that I'm asking myself. Every time you see log base 2 to the it is like a question that I'm asking myself. When you go back to our definition, it's saying the exponent or power to which a base must be raised to yield a given number. So I'm asking myself, I'm asking myself, how many tools do I need to multiply to, so that I can get 8? How many tools do I need to multiply so that I can get that value of 8? This 8 here. How many tools do I need to multiply so that I can get this 8 here? So I'll, I'll do my math and that is 2 times 2 times 2. That's 3 tools. I need 3 tools to get a value of 8. So that, bring, that gives me an answer of 3. But remember, I also told you that uh, it, it's the same as this so 2 to the power 3 is equals to 8 so you see when i have my two theories um i have my 8 
So how many tooth do I need? So if I have my two theory, two to the power theory, I have my eight. This is this is the same as this. Two to the power theory is equals to eight. Hope you're understanding very well. So basically, uh, we shall have this next example. How many twos do we need to get four? How many twos do we need to get? To, how many twos do we need to multiply so that we can get four? So how many twos are those? We have two multiply two. That is four. It's the same as two to the power two, giving us our answer as four. So we shall go to our next example. How many fours do we need to get 16? How many fours do we need to get 16? We shall have our four multiply by four, that is 16. So these are two fours, meaning our answer is two. We need two fours to get 16. This is the same as four squared is equals to 16. So, how many threes do we need to get nine? How many threes do we need to get nine? We need to multiply three times three to get nine. So, when we multiply three times three, that's three squared, our answer will be nine. So, basically, I hope you're understanding this. If you understand this, then you're really good to go with logarithms. So how many threes do we need to get 27? Of course, we need our three times three times three. This is three to the power three. We need three to the power three to get 27. How many twos do we need to get 32? We need five twos. So when you multiply two times two times two times two times two, we get our 32. So that's two to the power five. That's 32. So we shall try out these. How many sixes do we need to get uh, 36? How many threes do we need to get 81? How many twos do we need to get 64? And how many 10 do we need log 10? So basically, uh, you can pause the video and try out. Then we shall have the solutions here. So basically, how many sixes do we need to get 36? So uh, basically we need two sixes. Six times six is equals to six squared, which is equals to 36. Six times six is the same as six squared, which is equals to 36. So our log six, 36 is equals to two. How many threes do we need to get 81? Uh, that's the same as uh, three times three times three times three. So we need four threes to get our 81. So the answer here is a simple four. Our answer here is four because we need four threes to get 81. Three to the power four is equals to 81. How many twos do we need to get 64? We need our six twos to get 64. We need our six tools to get 64. So the answer e here is a simple six. Yeah. So what of log 10? Log 10 is equals to one because any number that you see without a base, we assume it has a base 10 here. Any number you see without a base, we assume it has a base 10 here. So they are like asking how many tens do you need to get 10? It's only one 10 that we need to get 10. So our answer is one. So yeah, we, uh, we shall go to log one, how to deal with log one. Each and every time you see log one, any number to the power, any, num any number uh, you're seeing, for example, log base six one is equals to zero. Each and every time you see that, you, log base eight to the, uh, log base eight one, is equals to zero log base any number as long as you see uh, one somewhere is always equals to zero because it's the same as six to the power zero or any number to the power zero which is equals to one according it like any power zero is one any number to the power zero is always one 
log 1 any base is always 0 basically every time you see log base 2 to the to 4 log base 2 4 it's equals to 2 because it's like they're asking how many 2s do we need to multiply to get 4 and those are 2 2 twos. so this is our answer so when the, when you see something uh, kind of similar but the reverse for example in, in, it's a fraction now look at this log uh, 1 over 4 a base 2 we automatically just know that uh, this is a negative we automatically just put this as a negative then log uh, base 2 16 they're asking how many 2s do we need to get 16 those are 4 2s and uh, basically what does this mean it means if we see 1 over 16 uh, uh, 1 over 6 log base 4 1 over 16 that is equals to negative 4 we shall really go into those details later but uh, what I want you to note is if you have a fraction in a log the answer is always going to be a negative you should always keep that in mind every time you see a fraction the answer is going to be a negative we're going to see more of those uh, then uh, reverse trick uh, log 2 base 8 is equals to 3 uh, what if you see log 8 base 2 what happens when you see log 8 base 2 we automatically just know that that is uh, we automatically just uh, put that as a 1 over 3 that's a third uh, log base 2 64 is equals to 6 how many tools do we need to get uh, 64 over 6 we shall also prove that in our next videos so when you look at this and you or you find them switching and it's log base 64 2 the answer is always equal to 1 over 6 log base 64 2 the answer is equal to 1 over 6 we shall also see that we shall prove that uh, now I want you to know this if the argument is bigger than the base chances of having a whole number x is greater than 1 if the argument is smaller than a base it's a fraction uh, there, there are more or less chances of having a whole number if it's lesser than if the base is less than but if it's greater than then the answer uh, the exponent will always be uh, greater than 1 so basically thank you very much this is the end of our video today and we shall start from there